Factsverse presents The Worst Failed Chain Restaurants That No One Misses Restaurant chains are a significant part of American culture. Some of the most popular include Red Robin, Applebee's, TGI Fridays, Olive Garden, Outback Steakhouse. These just are a few of the most popular chains, and while they are successful, there were a lot of others who weren't successful. Here are the worst failed chain restaurants that nobody misses. Howard Johnson's launched in the 1920s. By the 60s, there were a thousand of these restaurant-slash-hotel chains. The buildings were easy to spot from the highway thanks to their orange roofs. Over time, though, the business started to die off. The hotel portion of the company was sold off, but under the same name. None of the classic Howard Johnson elements remain. The restaurants died a slow death, and as of 2017, there was only one left. Sambo's was opened in 1957 by Sam Battistone and Newell F. Bonnet. The name of the restaurant was very controversial. The owners claimed the name was taken from both of their last names. Others believe it was an African-American derogatory term. The decor of the restaurant didn't help. It displayed the racist caricature of Lil Black Sambo. When the chain was doing well, there were a thousand locations. Due to the controversy, though, the company shut down in the 80s. Most of the locations were sold to Denny's, and the rest were just shut down, period. Country singer Kenny Rogers he teamed up with his business partner John Y. Brown to launch a chicken chain in 1990 called Kenny Rogers Roasters. The food was pretty popular, but they failed to market the chain properly. In 1998, the restaurants were sold to Nathan's. The chain was immortalized in an episode of Seinfeld. Mini Pearl's Chicken started in the 60s by businessman John Hooker and country singer Minnie Pearl. Early on, the restaurant was a success. There were nearly 500 locations. Unfortunately, the chain fell victim to a lack of cohesive menu and recipes, which caused the franchise to fall apart within just a few years. The chain has become a cautionary tale for all restaurant franchises. If you've ever seen Fast Times at Ridgemont High, you've heard of All American Burger. Well, that wasn't just made up for the movie. It really was a real thing. It was a regional fast food joint in the area. Thanks to the movie, it became a huge success, and over the years, the hype died down. The last West Coast location closed down in 2010. On the East Coast, you can still visit an All American Burger in Massapequa, Long Island. It's been open since 1961, and I hear the burgers are delicious. White Castle first opened in 1921. Well, soon there was a knockoff called White Tower, and it was opened by John E. Sachs and his son Thomas. White Tower copied everything from White Castle, including the menu, the advertising, even the architecture of the building. During its best days, there were 230 locations for White Tower. The chain died down, though, and White Castle brought legal action against them. Ha! <laughs> I wonder why! Chi-Chi's was launched in the 70s by Marno McDermott and NFL star Max McGee. The chain offered a menu of Mexican food, and it was very popular early on. As more and more Mexican restaurants opened, though, Chi-Chi's began to die out. The final nail in the coffin came in 2003 when an outbreak of hepatitis in the food caused the death of three customers. Yeah, that would put a damper on customers coming back. Ever heard of Lums? <laughs> Me neither. Lums was opened in 1956 by Clifford and Stuart Perlman. Their beer-steamed hot dogs and distinctive storefronts made them popular enough that they did have at one time 400 successful locations. When the Perlmans were ready to get out of the restaurant biz, they sold the chain to KFC for $4 million. At that point, the brand was phased out, and the last location closed in 2009. Steak and Ale became extremely popular because they offered cheap steak and salad. People loved it, but when other restaurants had the same idea, they left steak and ale in the dust. The last location closed in the 2010s. The restaurant was bought out by Bennigan's, and based on their website, they're bringing back steak and ale. According to the website, steak and ale will offer a casual dining experience at a casual dining price. There was a time when Burger Chef had over a thousand locations, and they were giving McDonald's a run for their money. Like McDonald's, they offered burgers and fries, and kids could get toys with their meals. Unfortunately, poor business practices put Burger Chef out of business, and it was eventually sold to Hardee's in 1981. 
A&W restaurants opened in 1919 and people loved their root beer. The root beer floats, of course, were incredible, and their burgers are pretty good, too. They are one of the oldest restaurant chains, and sadly, many of them have closed down. They've started making a comeback over the years, and they hope to open more than they close down now. There's an original location, though, in Greenville, Rhode Island, and there are many more to follow. Long Island native Herb Weston opened up Weston's Burger Chain when he was inspired by McDonald's during a road trip in California. He opened his restaurant in 1959, and the 15-cent hamburger was a huge success. When McDonald's and Burger King started opening up chains in the New York area as well, Weston's closed down for good. They just couldn't compete. Man, 15-cent hamburgers. That'd be great to see come back, wouldn't it? What other restaurant chains have disappeared and you actually miss them? Tell us in the comments and subscribe for more.